Monster. Part Fish, Part Alligator, Part Snake and possibly Part Human is terrorizing a lakeside area in Thailand. I guess this means it's time for another monster movie review. How will this one fare? Will it be worth your while? Hi there, it's Micha. Tag along for a moment if you like to find out. It all starts in a small fishing community somewhere in Thailand, where three siblings, two of them adults and one still a child, are looking for their father, but only find a mysterious giant egg. Soon after, the settlement is attacked by a wild hybrid creature, tall as a man, with the head of a fish, the tail of a snake and skin like an alligator, and able to walk on two legs. While Mei, the little sister, is missing and presumed dead, Kang, the big brother, is severely injured by a bite from the monster and rushed to a hospital by his other sister. Kang soon notices that he has some kind of psychic connection to the beast. Seeing glimpses of its whereabouts, which enables the police to capture it. Somewhere nearby, police inspector James, a recent widower dealing with his rebellious daughter, finds out that the creature is actually still a baby and its huge mother is now on a rampage, making its way towards her offspring. Will they be able to stop the giant monster too? Will there be a price to pay? Check out this movie to find out or join me in the spoiler zone at the end of this video. Honestly, this was quite a tough nut for me to crack review wise, as there are so many different elements at play here, which all influenced the viewing experience in one way or the other, often in opposite directions. Let's tackle it methodically. The acting was solid and the camera work and the production design are also strong. The creature effects are convincing for the most parts, presenting us with some well done CGI, covering most wide shots, while for closer contact with humans, especially by the smaller beast, practical effects were used as computer effects might have looked half baked in those moments. While I appreciate the fact that they didn't opt for CGI there and by using fast cuts and creative framing did a solid job, but some shots still looked a bit off. I guess this is why they sometimes also obscured the image by distorting it around the corners. But for me that only heightened that off feeling. Overall still the effects were strong enough and no reason to complain about. Which brings us, as so often, to the screenplay and storytelling elements as the main reason why this movie feels a bit disjointed. In parts this is due to some visual issues where you have scenes that just felt weirdly edited and some were plain confusing. For example a scene in which someone was pinned down by the mother creature while someone else set off an explosion nearby. That resulted in the captured person being splattered with blood. But how and why? Did the explosion hurt that person or did it hurt the monster? Or was the beast startled and therefore hurt the person? Ultimately it didn't make any difference for the story, but it still was a head scratcher. There were also many moments where the image was unnecessarily slowed down, often in scenes that were meant to be exciting, further counteracted by melancholic music in some scenes. That mainly happened in the middle of a movie, which therefore, after a fairly engaging first act, felt a bit long-winded. There were even some characters that were completely unnecessary, as they had no or next to no impact on the plot at all, with the most prominent ones being a pair of Chinese students that popped up in town. First they are introduced as, I guess, geology students, 
being interested in the climate change's impact on the region, then they are offering their help in a hospital as if they were medical students, but don't really do anything there and then they vanish until close to the end, where they notice that the monster is just looking for its youngling by using sonar as if they are biology students. The first part everyone should have already guessed by themselves and the sonar part, once more, was completely irrelevant to the story. It felt as if some Chinese investors were requesting them to be added to the script at the last second, so they were shoehorned in. The big issue though was that in the last act, all of a sudden, the movie abandoned the style and way its story was told to become philosophically and metaphysical. Maybe there are some cultural or religious aspects I just didn't get. Maybe if you have deeper knowledge of Buddhism, you may appreciate this development that happened after a 5 year time jump and dominated the last 20 minutes. For me at least, some of those middle parts already put my patience to the test and it was now stretched even further. And with that being said, let's get to the rating. Like I said, this review and especially the rating was a tough one for me. The movie had a lot going for itself, lots of potential with solid effects, overall great design and acting. The first half was also pretty entertaining, but then scenes felt too long, others led nowhere and then the whole film changed its lane close to the end, abandoning being a monster movie and making a philosophical statement instead. Again, maybe some cultural aspects were keeping me from appreciating the overall movie structure and plot developments and you may get a lot more out of it. For me, however, it was something that was okay to be watched, but I will likely not revisit it in the future. Some elements were really entertaining, especially the creature effects, but the movie definitely was not above average for me. So let's go with 5 out of 10 points for this movie, but with a small downwards tendency. By the way, on the German Blu-ray the movie runs 105 minutes, while the US disc lists a runtime of 93 minutes. Not sure if this is a mistake or if that version really is shorter. As I said, the film felt a little bit long, so maybe the US edit is a bit tighter and those 12 minutes difference mark the perfect remedy for that issue. So please keep that in mind as well. Now if you don't want to get spoiled, please stop the video at this point. If you don't mind spoilers or have already watched the movie, please follow me into the spoiler zone. The end is a bit ambiguous, so here in a nutshell a quick summary. After they found out that the monster is only looking for her child and for the egg, Apparently all danger is over and Kang uses the smaller creature to lure the mother away and they are not seen again. Well, they should tell that to everyone who died and was not standing in either creature's way. You could argue that at least the baby creature didn't know what it was doing, but the mother also killed innocent people left and right, including Inspector James's daughter, for which he will later seek revenge. This happens after the 5 year jump, as he witnesses how the fisherman community sacrificed a goat to the big monster <laughs> while Mei, the little sister, is petting the beast. Apparently she is also connected to a smaller creature, even physically, showcased by her spitting out eels or something like it. After first trying to kill the smaller monster, he can't get through with it as May protects it. He then, with the help of a monk, realizes that the real monster was his anger. He later investigates the origin of a creature and finds a cave with Kang's clothes and some wall paintings indicating that humanity in ancient times first fought them and later coexisted, even worshipping them. He is then surprised by the large beast, dot dot dot, the end. There are some theories making their rounds online, from the fishermen being the monster slaves to James dying at the end. The last one I'm pretty sure isn't correct as he told a monk before that he found out all he was seeking, indicating that he returned from his cave expedition. I don't think the community was enslaved, it is just coexisting, which for me was underlined by the narration at the start of a movie saying that monsters are not so different from us humans, likely meaning that for our children we will move heaven and hell, which I believe to be the main message the movie tries to convey. 
It may also hint to the creature literally not being different by merging with a human soul, because Kang was not shown again and May connecting with a larger beast may indicate that the one smaller creature he bonded with is now fully grown and that they have either spiritually or even physically merged. This likely will happen to May as well, as she is able to influence the currently smaller creature that likely bonded with her five years ago when it hatched from the egg, underlining her regurgitating act as being part of becoming one. If that is something to be desired or to be shocked by may also be a matter of your cultural background. The end didn't truly bother me per se, I just think it didn't really fit in with the rest of the movie at least regarding storytelling and the overall atmosphere it created earlier. What about you? Do you think this change of lane in the movie took makes sense? Would you want to watch this film? Do you have a take on the cultural aspects? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share or subscribe. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. For example, a scene in which someone was pinned down by the monster creature, by the mother creature, First they are introduced as, I guess, geology students. G geology? Yeah. Abandoning. Abandoning. The end is a bit ambiguous. So here's a nutshell 